So by changing the environment, you're going to be able to help compensate for the impaired executive abilities. Now, the ADHD view of ADHD, the attention view, does not tell you what to do. Does not, not one whit does it guide me. If you tell me somebody is inattentive, I don't know what to do for them. What, more coffee, as I said? <laughs> But if you tell me somebody has an executive disorder, I will give you five things to do immediately at any point in performance. Goodness, it's 3.30. Can I give you a break right after this one? Okay. Number one, your child cannot stop and hold things in mind. So don't make them. You need to use external, physical forms of information which means sticky notes, signs, symbols, charts, cues, reminders. The issue here is not the what, it's the why. You must find a substitute for working memory. And that means something external. The information, whatever it is that is key for you to remember, right here, right now, needs to be outside of your brain, in the visual field. You have got to externalize, is the phrase for that, the information that other people are holding in mind. It's what we are doing after age 55 and women in perimenopause. We are using a lot of sticky notes, let me tell you. <laughs> because I'm 59 years old and I already have a little ADHD working memory disorder, as do most women. By the way, it hits women harder than men. But it hits us both. Nevertheless, we're all running around with lists what was I doing? My wife even has a digital memory recorder in her car so that when she's out and she has to remember something, she dictates it in there so she can listen back and remember what the heck she was supposed to buy at the shopping center. You see what we're all doing? Making up for a working memory deficit. You need to do the same thing with ADHD. If you're an adult with ADHD, you should not be going anywhere without a paper journal in your pocket with a pen. Because anything you agree to do or anything others ask you to do is to be immediately written in that journal. And that journal is welded to your body. That is your working memory. Use it. And by the way, we find journals are better than digital devices because they lose the devices and they don't remember to turn them on and they don't remember to dictate into them. So as good as those things may sound and as high tech as they are, the good old paper and pencil notebook seems to do the job, okay? And if I were you, I would even have it on a chain like a motorcycle gang member has his wallet. <laughs> it is there from sunup to sundown. Man, when you put your pants on, that is in it all the time. Right? <laughs> and now you have a working memory. You have no internal clock. So if anything involves time, there must be a timer. There must be something physical outside of you that signals the passage of time. For young children, cooking timers are great but there are various other devices, including watches that beep every five minutes and vibrators that you can buy at the addwarehouse.com that have digital timers built in and you can set them to just vibrate in your pocket every so often. I don't care what the stimulus is. This is the why, people, not the what. Right? The why is you have no sense of time. So if I give you something that involves time, I have got to give you a timer. And if this extends more than just a few minutes to a half hour, you are going to need a day planner, a Palm Pilot, or some other means of keeping track of time. A week at a glance calendar is not a bad thing either. But you are going to become timer and calendar dependent, addicted, so that you can organize your life as well as other people who don't need to rely on those things so much. You cannot see the future coming at you. So if there is something you've agreed to do over time, if this child has a book report or a science project, you are going to break that into baby steps and do a piece a day. You are not going to point at the future and keep harping about summer reading. Have you done your summer reading? We've got that book report that's due next week. Have you done that? Right? No, we are going to take the book report and you are going to read three pages today. You are going to write four sentences today and I will give you 15 tokens right now. And that's how we're going to get this done. We are going to break the future into pieces and do a piece a day. And stop pointing at the future because you can't organize to the future. That is your disability. That's like going on to an inpatient unit at the psychiatric hospital and saying, God, these people hallucinate around here. What's going on? It's an inpatient unit. They're schizophrenics. What did you think, right? You should not be shocked that you have to break things down for people who have a time management disorder. And so you should do it for people with ADHD as well. Break the future into pieces. By the way, what does ERO mean on this? 
It means that the future comes at you in three pieces. The events that are coming towards you, the responses you prepare, and the consequences, the outcomes of what you're doing. E-R-O. So here's the lesson I would want this family to understand. If those E's and R's and O's are kept close together, you don't need a frontal lobe. And ADHD people can do them. That's a video game. But the minute you stretch these things apart with time, like a book report, you've got to read this book, your report's due in 30 days, it'll take a week to grade all the papers. I just put a month between the E and the R and a week between the R and the O. And if you have ADHD, you're disabled, big time. So the solution is to get the E's, R's, and O's back together. And that means baby steps, little E-R-O bridges across time. And that's how you would do a future assignment. Now, how are we going to deal with the fourth executive function deficit, the emotional motivational one? It means all motivation is external. We already talked about this which means I am going to have to have something in it for you if you are going to persist. So stop whining, stop complaining why you have to offer something for this child to work. The reason you don't offer it to other children is they have internal motivation. ADHD children do not. So don't worry that by paying them tokens for doing their reading or their assignments, you're somehow going to pervert a sense of doing things for their own reward or value, being a good citizen for the sake of being a good citizen. That is not going to work for ADHD. The ADHD child is Donald Trump incarnate, and there better be a deal. <laughs> and if there is no deal, it ain't getting done. So to borrow a phrase from Stephen Covey, please think win-win. A win for them, not just a win for you. And that means you are going to have to drop in the points, the tokens, the privileges, the sex, the drugs, the money, and the car. <laughs> My medication's wearing off, I think. <laughs> the last executive function, which is mental play, it's the ability to manipulate the contents of your mind in creative ways to invent multiple possibilities. Very hard for these people. This is why they can't do mental arithmetic as well as others. It's why they can't do digit span backward as well as others. That's why they have trouble playing the little musical game Simon. Working memory. But if you can't hold things in working memory, then you can't manipulate your working memory. And that's where the source of planning and problem solving are coming from. So what do we do? Well, we're going to take the same word we did before. Externalize. We're going to make problem solving manual, physical. You get to do it with your hands. So let's take math problems. I'm going to give you a bunch of marbles, a number line, and a Bacchus or a calculator, but the first three would suffice, right? You're going to do math with your hands the way it originally was done. I'm not going to ask you to do arithmetic in your head. You're going to find that to be difficult. You need a crutch. You need an external prosthesis to help you with your math. Now, what if this is a verbal problem or task, like you've got to write a story or an essay or something? I'm going to give you a stack of three by five file cards, and I want you to sit down and put your mind on dump. I want you to think of any idea you can come up with that has to do with this subject. Go. I want a thought per card. I don't care what order. I don't care what sequence. Just let your mind run wild. But just give me a thought a card. Now I'm going to take your cards and reorganize them. And now we've got them physical. And now we can create the story and the plot line. And if you do this on a laptop computer in Word, you can even move it around and spell check and cut and paste and do all that neat stuff because it's now external. Your ideas have become physical. And that's the secret here. Make the mental information physical in some way, and then they might be able to do it. This may explain why more people with ADHD wind up in the trades than in any other professions. I used to think it was because the trades don't require as much advanced education. I now think it's probably also the fact that it's manual. Whether you're a carpenter, a plumber, a landscaper, a bricklayer, a tuner, electrician, tuner of pianos, I meant to say, or others, you are doing something manual. And that may matter. We'll see. Lastly, ADHD rarely occurs alone. ADHD children are at risk for all of these other disorders. In fact, 80% of ADHD children and adults will have one of these other disorders, and 50% will have at least two of these other disorders. So seeing ADHD by itself is very rare. Seeing ADHD link up with a few other disorders is not rare. It's very common. And so I would want families to understand that 
we may have to treat other disorders, not just the ADHD. The ADHD may be one problem, and it may be the biggest, most impairing problem, but it's not the only problem that we may have to deal with. And on that note, we are going to give you a 10-minute break. You will be called back at 10 minutes to 4, because I've got 15 other ideas I want to share with you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks so much.